did you know? Resident Evil was originally commissioned as a spiritual successor to a Capcom game for the Nintendo Famicom called Sweet Home. Sweet Home was based on a Japanese horror movie of the same name and was never released outside of Japan due to the game's graphic content. Sweet Home featured zombies, elaborate puzzles, scattered notes revealing plot elements, and most notably, door opening loading sequences, all of which were later found in Resident Evil. Much like Sweet Home, early concepts for Resident Evil involved the use of paranormal enemies instead of living creatures. However, this was later changed to zombies inspired by the renowned horror director George A. Romero and his movies such as Dawn of the Dead. Capcom actually hired Romero to direct a series of live action commercials for Resident Evil 2, and later signed a deal with Universal Studios to have George Romero write and direct the Resident Evil live action movies. Romero stated in an official appearance in Universal Studios' Talk City that he had his secretary play through the entire game while he took notes of the experience. When Romero's script was finished and turned in, Capcom actually disapproved of it. In an interview with Electronic Gaming Monthly, Capcom producer Yoshiki Okamoto explained that Romero's script wasn't good, so Romero was fired. The job was then given to Paul Anderson, resulting in the current Resident Evil movie series we have today. An early draft of Resident Evil's story had two supporting characters that are absent from the final version of the game. Gelzer, a large muscular man with a cybernetic eye, and Dewey, a supposed comic relief character modeled after Eddie Murphy. Though these characters were cut, the name Dewey was given to an unrelated member of Stars named Edward Dewey. It's likely that the concepts for Gelzer and Dewey were reused in Capcom's later survival horror game Dino Crisis with the characters Gale and Rick, who both greatly resemble Gelzer and Dewey in appearance and personality. Biohazard, the Japanese version of Resident Evil, was actually meant to have Japanese voice acting for the dialogue, but this was cut and replaced with English voices. In a publication by Capcom called The True Story Behind Biohazard, series creator Shinji Mikami stated, We also recorded Japanese voices, not just English ones. They were discarded because they were really lame. Ironic though, considering that Resident Evil's voice acting is considered some of the worst in the history of gaming, and was actually featured in the 2008 Guinness World Records Gamers Edition for the worst game dialogue ever. Throughout development of the series, several Resident Evil projects were halted by Capcom before they were finished. After the initial release of Resident Evil, the game was ported to the Game Boy Color. The port was announced in 1999 as a direct conversion of the PlayStation game, and was being developed by UK developer Hot Gen Studios. Even though around 90% of the game had already been completed, Capcom cancelled the game in 2000, stating, We're not confident that the product would have made both consumers and Capcom happy. In 2012, the game's ROM was leaked online and made available to the public by a collector from AssemblerGames.com. Resident Evil 3 originally began development as a completely different game, and was planned to star the masked mercenary Hunk from Resident Evil 2 as he tried to locate a G-Virus sample. What eventually became Resident Evil 3 was a separate spin-off project developed concurrently with Resident Evil 3 called Biohazard Gaiden. Biohazard Gaiden also shouldn't be confused with the Game Boy Color title Resident Evil Gaiden. That's a completely different game altogether. Another cancelled Resident Evil game was a spin-off known as Biohazard Dash. In an interview in the Japanese magazine Genki PlayStation, Capcom producer Yoshiki Okamoto had this to say about the game. The starting point of the scenario is that there exists a room underneath the Tyrant's incubation room. The story of the game unfolds three years after the events of Biohazard 1. The characters are different, and this time, infected plants have attacked the inhabitants of Raccoon City. The victims have changed partially into plants. It's as if everyone is slowly transforming into some plant. Biohazard Dash was set to use many of the same areas from the first game, but with spider webs and cracks to indicate that time had passed. Ultimately, though, the game was cancelled to direct more focus on the development of Resident Evil 2. Capcom's Onimusha series was created after the cancellation of yet another Resident Evil game. Sengoku Biohazard was set in the Resident Evil universe and somehow involved ninjas. The game would have been structured much like the original Resident Evil, but would have taken place inside of a ninja house rather than a mansion. Yoshiki Okamoto revealed the details about this game in an interview with the Japanese magazine Dengeki Nintendo. The ninja house was to contain a series of booby traps as environmental hazards, and battles were to be fought using a katana and shuriken. Other concepts included hidden doors, falling ceilings, scrolls and ninja magic, and many other ninja techniques. Many of the ideas conceived in the planning stages of Sengoku Biohazard, though, did eventually make their way into Onimusha. Multiple references to the British rock band Queen and their album Made in Heaven can be found scattered within several different Resident Evil games. Chris Redfield's unlockable costume in the first game features a design with the text Made in Heaven written on the back. This design again appears as a default costume for his sister Claire Redfield in Resident Evil 2. Additionally, the original Made in Heaven jacket can be seen hanging above Chris's office at the police station in Resident Evil 2 and 3. In Code Veronica, the back of Claire's jacket reads Let Me Live, the title of the third track on the Made in Heaven album. And finally, Billy Cohen from Resident Evil Zero has a tattoo on his arm that reads Mother Love, 
the name of the fourth track from Made in Heaven. Several Resident Evil games have hidden references to previous games in the series. In Resident Evil Uprising for mobile phones, a sticky note can be found in the police department describing a recipe for a Jill sandwich. This is a reference to Resident Evil 1, where Jill is almost crushed, but is saved by Barry Burton. Barry then says, You are almost a Jill sandwich. This event was referenced again in Capcom's Dead Rising, in which a restaurant called Jill's Sandwiches can be found in the mall. One of the series' most unusual Easter eggs, though, can be found in Wesker's office. If the player searches Wesker's desk 50 times, an item can be found called Film D, which when developed in the dark room, will show a picture of Rebecca Chambers in athletic clothing holding a basketball. That's all for today, but don't forget to subscribe to Did You Know Gaming on YouTube, and follow Did You Know Gaming on Facebook and Twitter. Make sure you also check out DidYouKnowGaming.com so you can get more video game facts. And if you like this video, please check out our other ones. Feel free to also check out Proton John on YouTube, where you can learn even more things about Resident Evil characters, like about Chris Redfield's football career and Wesker's obsession with eggs. It, it, it'll make sense in context, just, just trust me on that.